G'day punters, welcome to the Mailbag Curls. We have feature racing once again from Morfittville and they actually look like pretty decent races. So we'll have a look at races seven and eight. Races seven or race seven is the Mackay Stakes over 1100 metres and then we've got race eight which is a group one Sangster over 1200. But uh, it's been a busy week on the punt, I think it's fair to say. How have you been faring yourself? Um. Yeah, I've been like betting really well. I've bet out of the yard um, two of the last three days, and um, I've lost two out of the last three days. <laughs> but I've been betting really well. She's I'm seeing them well. Um, what about we? Uh, what about we smacked into one in, in the last at Gatton yesterday, and um, <laughs> we've gone from three the fence to the outside fence in a hundred space of 150 meters on that hairpin, hit the front in the straight, and then something gets up the inside that was four back the fence that didn't leave the rail. Yeah, wait. I don't know how you deal with that, other than I had a good look at that Gatton Creek ravine. It was a a good 120 metre drop, and I wondered how good it would feel to land head first in the bottom of that. I mean, but decided to drive home and do it all again. At tomorrow. least you weren't at the bull. That's probably the main thing. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. There was that some... is one of the most bizarre. Um, things I've ever seen. Um, I saw a tweet saying that, like a jockey, a, a, one of the hurdly guys fell off, <laughs> and he listed the injuries like broken sternum, fractured ribs, split spleen, fucking burst liver. But the horse is okay. Yep, <laughs> that's the main thing. We don't we <laughs> we don't want the uh, the organisation or the protection of jumps jockeys to be all over us. If there is such oh, a thing. but he's been airlifted. He's like, he'll be right. Yeah, he'll be okay. But eventually. the horse is okay. <laughs> um, that was uh, something else. Those three days, I don't think I've run second on so many double figure shots in my life. And I think the, probably the one that summed it up was Ollie taking arms giver back to the inside and just holding, railing through into the straight, and then just was bobbing up and down late and got run over by a Mar Ustus thirty to one shot, which was just sickening. Um, anyway, mm. there were some sickening rides there. Like Steve Pateman was on dot com saying they'll be coming to the outside fence. One jock did it in the last. Yeah, P I double S in. And thank goodness for that as well, because what a, what an aptly named last winner as well. Launchpad. It's like absolutely, oh. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, anyway, let's yeah. just move on from that place. It's a it's a once a year oh, joint, isn't it? Like you don't want to be doing yeah. it more than once a year. You'll have no. issues, more more issues than what's needed. All right, let's let's have a look. Morfordville, race seven, rail yep. true. It's currently saying a soft six. I don't think that matters. Um, market has behemoth favourite at four dollars twenty from Bo Rosser at four eighty. Ironclad five dollars. Seven dollars for Dexalation, the Inferno ten, Azar twelve. What's your starting point? I'm gonna mark Bohemoth double figures. Okay. I think he might be Max Gorn. Max Gorn. The horse may be G A W N. Gorn. And not as in like a premiership player. No. <laughs> That's my starting point, I think, Peter. Let's start at the top of the market and have a look at why is this horse that price? How is it this price? Okay. So it does have first up form traditionally. So first up, eight starts, five wins, two seconds. Yeah. But are you mostly basing that off the last start in the CF4 where it settled on speed and just did not do anything? I think he... It was disappointing in the lead up to that as well. Yeah. Uh, that's my concern. Like, you know, this horse is not getting it. Oh, I can't believe I was about to say that. <laughs> He's not getting any younger. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Can't believe I used that cliche. Oh. When a, as a horse gets older and its performances regress, I find it difficult to think that they can re capture their old form. Yep. The 
that's, that's maybe that's just me trying to force that opinion to try and find an angle in this race. But I, uh, I'm marking this horse double figures. Okay. That's my starting point. From there, I think from you, there, you, ha- you obviously have to factor in the two Clark and horses. And of the two, it would be fascinating to get an insight into what the uh, stable thinks. But I think you'd have to look at Ironclad because the last prep, obviously it had, what, the one, two, three starts and it did nothing in each of those. Beat one one horse home. So it clearly wasn't right last prep. But it's come back in one first up, 53 days freshen. It was a good figure though. I think he's obviously back somewhere near his best. Should sit reasonably in a good spot with Jamie Carr on board. Yeah, that was where I went to next because this programming of this Ironclad's prep, mm. it's like this horse has been programmed by a part owner that lives in Texas or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Keeping... Yeah, I mean, we saw we saw him win a Golden Mile last, you know, last spring uh, autumn, um, and we thought this horse is going to launch into something um, a lot better than that. Yeah. Um, going forward, now, what is this race called? The DC McKay the DC or McKay States. Yeah. So eleven hundred. Like what's it's? It looks like there's something else next start for it though. Is my concern. Would that be the Goodwood? Goodwood. That's the word I was looking for. I was thinking Stradbroke, handicap, because there's no, you know, we've got Mizzou favourite for some Group 1 races in Queensland. And I was thinking, why is this horse not in Queensland? So then, so I'm looking at this race thinking, why is this horse in this race? Because it's going to have a pipe opener for the Goodwood. Yeah. So then the question is, why is it back to 1,100, 53 days between? I'm saying, I'm not saying it can't win, but I'm saying like next start. Okay. So might have one more in mind. So the Jeez, stable mate, of options here. what are you thinking of the stable mate then, Bo Rossa? Oh, this is her chance, isn't it? I mean, this is probably the horse that I would think this is probably more your um, strategy contender yeah, between the two. You think this is a better horse than Ironclad? I, on what Probably we've seen is. so far, I don't know. It's got the bigger peak figures, which doesn't necessarily yep. mean anything, but it's also been exposed in more high tempo races and has managed to cope with it. So, you know, it's it's yep. Group One placed. Um, but again, I, I don't know what the stable's thinking, so that's that's the hard part. It's probably a good thing that you don't know. Um, <laughs> look, I think. Uh, the gate is going to have it settling ahead of the stable mate, clearly. Yeah. Um, and I think this like looks, yeah, it's certainly, definitely, definitely, well, not definitely. I've got it ahead of the stable mate. I think. Okay. All right. So, what else does that leave us with? If we're not exactly declaring anything in the top three in the market, can we find something at a bigger price that potentially we're happy to have a ping at? Um, what about the go forward horses here? Sava two XL and maybe Azar. Yeah, can it get there? Azar, but out of the two, I'd probably lean more towards Azar. But I, I must say, I haven't actually watched any of the trials or the jump outs at this stage. I'd be more happy to just see how the horse presents out of the yard. But mm. again, it probably probably has the potential, but I think that's probably the issue with it, isn't it? It's just always been on potential, that horse. Azar, you're talking mm. about? Yeah. Yeah, and here's another one like, you know, he's um, probably another one that's going to take benefit from this run first up 1,100 to go to a good wood. Yep. Can someone pistol, maybe if you could just point out to me which one's ready to win 1,100 today with nothing left in the tank because this is their grand final sort of set up and can you just tell me? Because uh, I'm struggling a little bit to see where it is. Yeah, it, it is a bit like that. I mean, again, what price are we getting Shimino? If Shimino got out to 30s, I'd probably follow up and have another ping at the stumps there. Um, I even went looking for the Inferno, couldn't get it priced anywhere. 
near it. But I, I can see that yep. it definitely wasn't suited last start. That sale just wasn't suited versus that pattern on the day. So, and you've still got Mark Zara sitting on to, on board. But you know, I'd rather not mm. see a gear change. Tongue tie first time. Yeah. It's a tricky race. It's it's not one that I look at and I go, I'm dead keen on betting here. And wouldn't be so shocked whatsoever if the Clark and Pair fight out the finish. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I would lean to that being most probable. So good luck to, uh, mm. to Trader Matt and everyone else involved with Ironclad. And uh, equally, the Wester's Best owned Bo Rosser. There's a bit of narrative for you, punters. Ugh. I feel sick. Yeah. Um, race eight's far more interesting. The Sankster, the group it one is. over 1,200 because we've got September unfavourite at 480 and I cannot get this horse marked anywhere near that price. Well, I'm glad that you opened with that because I was going to open with... Um, I started my focus at the top of the market uh, after looking at our data mm. and I was like... We've got September run like double figures here. What's happened? What have I missed? Yeah. Hateful horse September run. It really is. Um, and that's not totally because Walla trains it. Partly, definitely. <laughs> but from a horse that was completely gone to winning its group one, you know, they just always seem to win their group ones, these stables with these types of horses, don't they? Yeah. These stables, you know? Just run some, you know, miraculous figure that's three to four lengths better than anything else. Not even that. Like it's in that uh, in the William Reed. It was just completely and utterly blessed, given the way the yeah. track was playing. Willow gave it a complete peach. Not to say you can't do it again, but you look at the SP. You know, twenty six dollars first up in the new market ran well, but was on the right side of the track for that still bizarre race and then second up was $17 in the William Reed where it's managed to get over the top of Halverson General Bow generation like it doesn't exactly scream hot race when you've got some other horses here that are probably equally well performed they have better figures and they've been running in harder races Mm. well there's a fair few of them and I'll let you start yeah, well, my starting point no, was away game. Why not? Yeah. Um, just purely going through the punting form wides there last start and uh, evaluating where the best spots were to be on the day. It was heavy rails bias on that occasion, settled one off and then sort of found itself in the three wide lane or the three lane off the fence. Um, ended up yeah. in the wider lanes there late, which weren't the best places to be. I'm more than happy to forgive that horse. Had a good SP. I love the run in the Oakley Plate there behind Moravi. It was beaten half a length. I think that's just clearly superior form to a lot of these. And, mm. um, you know, at the price, Linda Meach keeps the ride. She's obviously come off a fat week of the bull, <laughs> gate one. That's just like a lot, oh. of ticks, a lot of ticks there for me and $8. Yeah, and I think they... Um they might have learned something too because that run at Caulfield was excellent behind Moravi. So I backed it Magic Millions Day and Jay Mack used her up early out of the gate. Yep. Um, and she just didn't finish off at all. Like, well, I shouldn't say finish off at all. She still ran third, but she was completely no match for the isotope who come off its back. Um, so I've mapped her three the fence here, yep. um, getting the perfect run for it in transit and then it's just a matter of whether um linda can get the brakes when she needs them if she does it wins i think oh i shouldn't say that i'm not declaring it but <laughs> like you'd be happy to be on eight dollars yeah because if it gets things it's if it gets things right uh the way you'd hope uh in run it's half that quote yeah but that uh, that's why you've got to take double the price of what you think it could be. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, look, there's probably a couple of others in this race that can figure, yeah. obviously. Um, Heresy is one that I've got with good enough figures uh, to be able to put itself into the finish. And look, probably was 
I guess on face value, it was maybe a little bit disappointing their last start. But again, just going back through some of those wides and the lanes that it was in, it wasn't exactly in the good, mm. in the the best spot there on the card there at Morfordville. Again, that yep. was another day where you wanted to be more forward and inside, and ended up back and outside. Uh, also goes Kayla Crowther to Damian Oliver, so you know, bit so of an downgrade. Upgrade. Yeah, <laughs> I mean upgrade. Um, <laughs> yeah, so sorry. <laughs> what a knock. Um, <laughs> You know, come off that uh, heavy track win at Ramwick, and then I think we might have half potted it coming off that heavy track run, weren't we? Yeah, possibly. Last time, had that um, you know had that run now gets Ollie as you said. You don't have to go too far back. Um, you know, when it's got beat one point nine and one point seven hinged and fangirl, or particularly the fangirl run on a good surface, so. Yeah. There's some numbers there to support it being nine dollars instead of fifteen dollars. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing that, um, like, I really hope for the content creators at Racing.com is that uh, Brooklyn Hustle wins. Um, yeah. You know that would be great narrative, obviously with Jamie on as well, and you know the elusive Group One. Um, that'd bring a tear to my eye. Um, <laughs> Mainly because I won't be on, but yeah. Secondly, is the um, yeah, she's a dad, she's a darling, you know. Brooklyn or, hustle, yeah. <laughs> Players delight. Uh, I shouldn't speak like that, but you know, you just like you, as a punter, you just form opinions on horses, and you just get a bias set one way or another. Yep. And. It's just like the the wisdom of the crowds frothing over this horse is being moral beaten so many times, and like it just turns me inside out. Yeah, it's breeding it. That's all. It's not the horse's fault. No, I'm not begrudging anyone winning a Group One. Christ. Um. Anyway, that's not really analysis, is it? Um. <laughs> Bella Vella. Like. On speed. Probably not good enough, but I still think it's a better chance than market. Yeah, I, th- I think the twelve hundred's the knock there, isn't it? Like eleven hundred's mm. probably the extent of what she wants out in front, and she got a very slow tempo there first up off a really long spell. I... Yeah, she did have it easy, but yeah, her last hundred certainly was strong enough. Like... Yeah, yeah. Like so that, that 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 data tells me that she was fit enough and there to win. Yeah. First up, like when her last hundred was a strong, was strong. You know, different if you sort of get there nine tenths fit and you, you know, paddle the last fifty, and sort of half scrambled in, I suppose, in the end. But it was still strong data. Yeah. And look, the the winner from last year tailed her in that race, instant celebrity, mm. which seems to have again like another horse that maybe was a bit flat last prep come back in good order yeah. that was the horse that won this race last year where willow where the fence was dynamite i think wasn't it and in the wisdom of um the profession everyone got off the fence yep. in the straight and yep. willow just sailed through the fence and yeah I think, like, was that the race that I'm just trying to work out who I backed because I didn't back the winner, that's for sure. No, I don't remember. I would have backed a Will Clark and horse on good authority and it would have got beat. <laughs> but uh, it's, it beat subpoenaed and Ruby Saki. Yeah. So, all right. Okay, so no, well. if we if we wrap up this race, I'm going to you know, stick with, or I'm going to side with away game, smaller bet, instant celebrity and heresy. That's the way I'll play this, but main main bet away game. Yeah, look, I'm just, I'm just going to be on it uh, away game. I'm betting Gold Coast, Ipswich, and Rockhampton on Saturday. So uh, I've had a look, and I was just like, I'm not going to try and be too complicated here. Yep, I'm going to be on away game and Linda and Team CMR. CMR. Team CMR. We're we're all converted now, aren't we? We're all been drinking. Absolutely, yeah. Cody Morgan racing up there at Tamworth, there, bloody <laughs> good trainer. <laughs> that just worked out really well. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, 
it's uh yeah i mean if obviously if you like a horse at kieran mar trains like you don't have to look, think too much about why it's there no no exactly right. To win. <laughs> exactly right um yeah so it's, uh I, i've got no big calls or big declarations this week in south australia pistol it's um you know, like it's some actual deep fields here yeah. right, with a number of hopes. So if you like something, um, you know, you're shopping, what, $4.80 the field, I think, in, in these better races. So there's an opportunity you might find a horse above your rated price, which would equal value. Bloody wonderful, isn't it? Uh, you've also got the Hollandaise sauce up there in Gold Coast. Yeah, we you? have. We have. The race that Zaki won last year in announcing... Um, his arrival as a top class horse. They're betting a dollar sixty five. Um, he, he's possibly a dollar ten. <laughs> um, and the only thing that will get it beat is maybe a bit of team riding from a stable that has multiple acceptors in the race. Like I don't know how they beat Zaki. Um, it's currently a soft seven. It's going to rain. Um, this will be the last meeting that we race run in Southeast Queensland for a week because we're going to get four hundred mils next week. Yep. Um, so, you know, even on a bog track, like, they were struggling to lift their legs, that race that Zaki ran in last time when Nash went on the ambulance track and knocked it off. <laughs> um, so I think it's adept to getting through the ground, and it's just like a complete moral, isn't it? Um, genuine horse, but proper horse, Zaki. Yeah. Loving. Um, and then, yeah, that's the Hollandale source handicap, and then um, <laughs> some support cards, uh, support races on the card at Group 3 level. But we have the Archer, the slot race in Rockhampton, Pistol, where Streets of Avalon was scratched from this morning, um, which makes Apache Chase immoral. So uh, we'll be betting all over southeast Queensland this Saturday because it could be the last time we bet for a little while. Okay. Based but... on the forecast of Armageddon. <laughs> I mean, anything not for the first like time. 500, anything 500 metres below sea, above sea level, so Toowoomba 610-ish, right? So yep. anything 500 metres and below, chance to be underwater. So I'm expecting you to be Noah's Ark leading the streets Basically of punters we'll up to the higher ground of Toowoomba. Yeah, oh, and I say that facetiously, but oh, we've seen some terrible devastation here. I drove to Gatton yesterday and went through with you know, Grantham, which has been underwater twice. It is, it's not a joking matter, obviously. So no. no being silly but like the rain forecast is like horrific so we might be racing at Toowoomba next Saturday for the Doom and 10,000 if I can get the horses up here that's a big if (laughs) indeed well we'll stay tuned for that we'll be catching up on Monday we'll deep dive the weekend we'll see what happened and I'm sure we'll talk about it and also spray some people along the way my word we will what we're here for.